Getting a little final sanding done on the uh, centerboard trunk uh, in preparation to get a little primer on it. Um, it's been a busy couple of weeks uh, around the studio. Spring is finally here, so between uh, springtime chores, uh, I was able to get the centerboard uh, trunk, um, the bed logs, and the centerboard made. And in addition to that, we cast a little bit of lead. So we've got a lot to cover. So uh, stay tuned uh, for this week's episode of The Art of Boat Building. My name is Bob Emser. I'm a sculptor and a boat builder. My sculptures have always been inspired by nautical and aeronautical imagery. In fact, sometimes people passing by my studio would ask if I'm building a boat. I've always enjoyed the artistry of wooden boats. It seems like I've been building boats for over 40 years, and now I'm building sculptures afloat. Welcome to the Art of Boat Building. I began by cutting some blanks and then adhering them together and treating them as one unit. For a better organization of the video, I'm showing the construction of the centerboard trunk first and then the centerboard. In reality, I worked on both of them simultaneously. The centerboard trunk is made up of two sheets of three-quarter inch marine grade plywood. I used the pattern that I had made earlier to trace out the centerboard trunk. After cutting out the centerboard trunk sides, I then used a marking gauge to transfer the two inch width of the uh, spacers for the centerboard trunk. On some oak stock, I used the same method to lay out the curve and to cut it out on the bandsaw. I'm using one and three quarter inch stock here, and I need to resaw that down to one and one quarter, which is called for in the plans. I then put it through the uh, surface planer to get it exactly that size. All of the pieces cut, I was then ready to prepare them for assembly. So I'm going to put on some uh, six ounce fiberglass on the inside of the uh, centerboard trunk for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first being that there'll be a lot of movement of that centerboard moving up and down and it'll just help uh, the inside not wear out. Uh, the other reason is that uh, this boat's going to be in a fresh water uh, atmosphere and uh, wood does not like fresh water. It's absolutely fine in salt water. Uh, so since it's going to be a freshwater boat, I'm going to put a layer of fiberglass on the inside of the centerboard truck. So uh, next thing is to mix up some uh, epoxy. One of the best ways to spread the epoxy is to use a small plastic squeegee. Uh, the squeegee uh, works really well in filling the fibers up uh, and also making it have a very even coat of epoxy on there. Uh, 
but in about four or five hours we'll come back when it's been set and we'll be able to take a uh, utility knife and trim all of the uh, edges off uh, which should uh, and then we'll put uh, one more coat of epoxy on it um, before we're finished to really fill the fibers up well. So while I've got a little extra epoxy here, I'm going to go ahead and give at least one coat on the trunk, center trunk spacers. I, one of the, I put this visqueen down. Uh, one of the things epoxy does not do is it will not stick to visqueen. So that way uh, the pieces won't stick and also it won't harm my table saw table. So in just a little bit shy of five hours, I would just go through this and cut the Right, now that we have that uh, trimmed up, we'll put a second coat of epoxy on there to fill in uh, the weave that I still see. Uh, one of the things about epoxy is uh, as long as it has not fully cured, we can put a second coat on there without doing anything to the surface. Uh, and then it'll actually chemically bond itself to it. If I waited until this fully cured, then I would have to mechanically sand it so that it have a, a mechanical bond instead of a chemical bond. So uh, we'll mix up some uh, epoxy and we'll put that on with a foam roller so that it'll put it on there nice and, and even. So we need to mix this for a full two minutes and we know that it's completely blended. And it looks like it's been just a little over two minutes. These uh, small napped yellow rollers work really well for applying the epoxy. And we'll put it on in a nice thin layer. All right. So we'll let that uh, cure and we'll see if it needs uh, another coat in uh, a few hours. If it does, we will put some on there. Otherwise, um, we may be ready to uh, start assembly. The plans call for the bed logs to be made out of white oak. That is uh, two and a quarter by four inches with a three quarter by three quarter inch rabbit out of it. So I accomplished that by taking a, uh, what is con considered a eight quarters. An eight quarters nominal thickness is one and three quarters inches. And then a piece of four quarter, which nominal dimension is three quarters. So that made me end up with the two and a half by four inch required piece of stock. In cutting out this bed log curved, I left about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch uh, beyond the pencil line. And then I cleaned it up with a uh, power planer. We're now ready for assembly. And I used 3M's 5200 Marine Adhesive Sealant. That was some one and a quarter inch bronze screws made for a tight connection. I applied sealant to both edges of the bed log rabbet 
to ensure a watertight seal. After getting everything lined up, I used some clamps to make sure that it was pulled together nice and tight. I pre-drilled the holes using a tapered countersink bit. And followed up with those one and a quarter inch bronze screws. With the port side assembled, I then attached the bed log to the starboard side. I took this opportunity to paint the inside of the centerboard trunk with some anti-fouling paint as it would be nearly impossible to get to it later. Anti-fouling paint helps to slow the growth and to facilitate the detachment of subaquatic organisms. After two coats of paint and several days of drying, it was time to assemble the two halves using the same method of the 5200 sealant and bronze screws. I mixed some epoxy fairing compound to fill the screw heads as well as fair out the edges of the centerboard trunk. Once the blue and yellow are mixed together to give you a green, you know you've got it mixed properly and ready to use. Using an awl, I used the patterns to mark out the edges of the centerboard. The plans call for a 5 by 9 inch lead weight to be inserted into the centerboard. After laying out the location of the lead counterweight, I then drilled half inch holes through the two sheets of half inch plywood. I then set my saber saw to a 45 degree angle and cut out one sheet at a time. This would allow for the lead to be locked in with these opposing cuts. In order to glue the two pieces together, I mixed up some epoxy and thickened it with some cellulose fiber fill. I then spread this mixture with a 1 16th inch notched trowel. This allowed the epoxy to be put on there in a very uniform thickness.
I apply the epoxy to both sides of the center board. In gluing the two halves together, I clamped the, them down to the top of my covered table saw. Knowing the table saw was dead flat, this would ensure that I had a good flat center board. In places that I couldn't get clamps, I stacked some lead and steel plates to weight it down in the center. I cleaned up the edges with a belt sander and then I used a quarter inch roundover bit to ease the edges. The plans to help me locate where the center board pin that it will pivot on is located. This small detail here shows that the trailing edge of the center board needs to be tapered. And this dash line is where the taper starts out. Now this is a one and a half inches equals one foot. So when I use my one and a half inch scale, that is a setback of about four inches. I used my power plane to create that taper. It was really handy to have these laminations of plywood being exposed as that really made it easy to know that I was getting it a nice even taper. Now it's time to uh, pour the lead in the center board um, in this section here. Now earlier I had put a steel plate on the back to hold the, the lead when we pour it in the other side. So uh, in order to calculate the lead we um, know that this opening here is 5 by 9 inches by 1 inch which would equal 45 cubic inches. And lead weighs 0.41 pounds per inch. Oops, pounds per inch. And um, so that times 45 should equal 18.45 pounds or 8.3 kilograms. Uh, so we can round that up to, to 20, we'll say, and so that would make this about 9 kilograms. In getting set up, the first thing I did was to make sure that the center board was good and level. I wanted to take a moment to talk about sourcing materials. Um, there are some things when you're building a sailboat that you can't just run down to the hardware store and pick up. And one of those is lead. Uh, lead's pretty expensive if you're buying fresh, clean lead. So I, last fall I started uh, looking around to source some lead and what I came up with was uh, spent ammunition. Um, so I found this uh, lead um, from, that came from an indoor uh, shooting range. Uh, and you can see that it's mixed in with uh, the pieces of lead and also uh, pieces of copper and brass. Uh, from the copper jackets. Um, when we melt the lead, we will, uh, all of these, the lead's the heaviest, so the lead will sink to the bottom and all of the um, copper and brass and debris will float to the top that we can just uh, skim off. Um, I have a, a little over 850 pounds here, uh, knowing that there's, there's some uh, debris in there. 
uh, we'll need about 650 pounds uh, for the ballast keel. So here's the setup I have to uh, smelt the lead. I've got a uh, turkey fryer uh, that I found used and a uh, cast iron skillet uh, to, to melt the lead in. Uh, one of the things I found is it's better to have a, a, a skillet that has two handles as opposed to one because as you're, uh, once you have the lead in there, it's instead of picking it up with one hand, it's much easier to um, take a, a handle like this that I had made that you can then hook the, the, the uh, skillet with and it's much easier to then pour it. Uh, I also have uh, a lid to put on there. It helps uh, the uh, lead melt quicker. Um, got a fire extinguisher ready. A couple of ingots uh, molds here, so if I have a little excess. And of course, I have a respirator. So uh, we'll get started uh, melting some lead. Well, that was a successful pouring. After the lead cooled, the next day I took my power plane and cleaned it up. Once again, I mixed up a batch of fairing compound in order to blend the wood and the lead together. It's a smooth surface.
I am painting the center board with some anti-fouling paint. Uh, before I did this, I gave the center board two coats of uh, primer epoxy on it. And then uh, I sanded that lightly. And so now I am uh, going to apply two coats of this paint to the center board. The plans call for quarter inch bronze bolt to be located on each end of the two bed logs and tie them together. Earlier I had uh, drilled a quarter inch hole between the first bed log uh, on the drill press. That made it so that I could get a nice uh, straight and true uh, hole in there. So then when I uh, use that as a guide for this long bit, so that I can drill the rest of the way through. I created a template in order to guide the three quarter inch countersink tool. For the uh, bronze bolt that needs to go through both of these bed logs, I cut a piece of quarter inch bronze rod and uh, threaded it on both ends. Now you could also use uh, a piece of a threaded rod all the way through uh, if you didn't have, if you had access to that. I had this, so that's what I use. Uh, so we would put um, a washer and a nut on one end and then drive it through. And we'll flip it over. And we'll get a washer. I'm using a topside primer on this side uh, instead of the anti-fouling paint. Anti-fouling paint is quite expensive, like it's over $100 a gallon. Uh, and this is, of course, much less. Also, this uh, side will most variably get painted the a color of the inside of the boat. Well, that does it for one coat of primer. Uh, let that dry and we'll get a second coat on it. And then that will do it for our center board and our center board trunk. Uh, in the next episode, we'll be working on the frames for the mold of the boat and hopefully get it all set up. Um, I wanna invite you to uh, leave a comment uh, below uh, I read every comment that is posted and uh, respond to those that have questions. Uh, so I invite you to do that. Um, so uh, once again, uh, thanks for watching.